trying to, I'm going to try to stay, I'm going to keep my watch at five minutes. Okay, basically the, excuse me, primary objectives in this class is to make the connections of uh, movement uh, when you're moving the, when you're setting up a shot uh, and the movement of the actors in the in the uh, stage in the stage shot um, and also the movement of the camera um, because that information is something you can carry on into animation okay the other the other primary objective is composition and that actually sticks well with the animation. Uh, movement is the visual language for the movie director. Directors recognize that there is a connection between these movements and the connection uh, is subliminally focused on theme and character. Um, there are three basic rules to camera motivation. And these, these, are, like, these are like the common rules. Uh, if you went, if you left here and you went to a studio and you were asked, and they asked, some, some crew member asked you, you know, well, you went to school for that, what'd you learn? If you can remember anything, and I'll reiterate on this many, many times, remember the number three. Three will get you through. Three will get you by. It'll get you by. They'll understand that you understand video and film if you can remember that number. Because three is used throughout as a basic standard number. There's three-point lighting, there's state the staging of composition is three points. You got a master shot and two and two other uh, outside shots. Uh, when you're setting up the sound, uh, the sound arrangement should come into a triangle. You know, if you want, if you really want to have like ambient sound, and you want to have the dialogue, and you want to have the sound effect, there are three different sound sources you can get. You know, um, three is the best number. Three is the best number when you're shooting. Like I mentioned earlier, the shooting arrangement. If you take the number of shots, it'll, the best number or the most common number is three. Uh, so three is a good number to remember. It's an easy number to remember. Uh, number one, if it works, then it's right. Uh, the closer the camera gets, the more truth is, the more truth it tells. Uh, shots are motivated by performances. Basically, this, all these three uh, pieces of information are so very true. Normally. What a lot of uh, film critics don't like is that when they talk to filmmakers, a lot of filmmakers don't, they don't uh, talk in, in a colorful, detailed way, you know, why, they, why a particular scene was uh, composed or shot in a certain way. Uh, they, don't, they don't have like uh, an ulterior like method or behind what they're doing. They just, they, they set the, the shot up and it looks fine to them they take the shot, you know, but the critic, you know, or the, the one who's going to like write about that particular movie, they're like, well, you know, I mean, is it compared to like something else? No. You know, the, the guy was in the car, and the reason why I, I took the shot where the guy fell out of the car and rolled in the dirt, because it kind of looked kind of cool when the dirt was, you know, kind of like following behind him, that looked kind of cool, and I would kind of like, well, so we, we stay with that, you know. And, and, and that, but that doesn't sound... You know, that doesn't sound, you know, uh, as descriptive or, or as well-versed <coughs> as somebody who's going to write about it, like an author who's going to write about that particular film. Who might write in a way where they might say uh, it's the Suzette of the composition. The Suzette meaning that it's motivated or it's prompted by various, uh, there was various motifs that went on and that's what motivated the whole composition. That person that that does it like Steven Spielberg, he might say, well, yeah, we, I like this shot. The guy came in, looked kind of real to me. I like that. That's what I'm looking for. You know, so that's why a lot of film critics actually don't like filmmakers because filmmakers don't explain the way they, they want them to explain. The filmmakers, they're, they're not, they, they're probably, they probably are thinking along those lines, but that's not important to them. They're like, well, you know, they're thinking about the the overall production, the end. They're thinking the end product. We want to just get this, you know. We we didn't set it up like that, you know. I mean, uh, there's there's no real serious backstory to the shooting. We 
just, it looked good, you know. We went out there on the location, on the hill. The, the sun kind of looked good when it was way out there in the run. That looked kind of nice. So we put the person's head and we shot it close. Looked like her head was on fire. It was great. <laughs> but you didn't try to do that as to make it imply like she was like evil? No. It looked good in the camera. Could we write it as evil? Yeah, write whatever you want. That's not what we got. I didn't think about evil at all. I was thinking about, you know, her hair, you know, fire, you know, fire head. That was cool. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the, the, the point is that normally, uh, basically, what, what they say in the world of film and, and uh, videography is that you're, you're an artist and you're setting up the shot and everything that's in that little uh, LC window, that's your little frame for the composition that you're making. And you're just, you're making it, you're setting it, or you're shooting it the way you want to see it. You know, you want it to see, you want it to be seen that way. And you're trying to tell, you're, you're setting it based on the story the way you think the story could be told. And that's what you're doing, you know. It does become a difficult task to try to explain it, to explain certain shots. Some shots are self-explanatory and some aren't. You know, some are just that, like I said, you know, the, the filmmaker or the camera person, they, they saw a good shot, or the director and the camera guy, they collaborated and they, they saw the same thing. And they went with it. You know, they, there was no there was no backstory behind it. They just liked it. It was good. You know, we, we shot that. You know, they could they could easily, you know, make up something if they wanted to, but then they would have to remember that forever. You know, whenever they were asked again, they were like, Yeah, but you said it was kinda like Somebody going back to their childhood. Remember you said that before? Yeah, it is like that. And it's also like the fire hit. Fire. And that's in childhood when you're a little kid and your head's on fire and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and then that way, but it's better for them, for the, the filmmaker to just be, just be themselves and just tell it like it is. And if they like the composition, then, then that's the most important thing for them. They say if you keep these precepts in the mind, is as you decide on your camera shots, you remain you remain on track. Uh, movement of the camera is closely identified with movement of people and how they see images in life. And that is so very true. Basically, this is kind of like a, a thing that actually parallels itself to animation. Um, when you're animating a character, you're trying to imitate life. Um, and when you're videotaping like a scene, unless you are a person who's really technical and your concerns are with the all of the little uh, instruments that are inside the camera. Uh, most of us will be like, will be like more artistic than we will be uh, analytical. We'll be like, well, you know, I like the composition. I like the way it stays. I got somebody uh, in the foreground. I got somebody way in the background. I like that. You know, it's a three. It's a three shot arrangement. I got three people. I separated. I have one person real here real close, I got another person who's not as close, and I got another person who's way in the background. And that's just how I want it. I just want it to be like that. Well, is that, does that mean that uh, this is representative of like uh, the growing up, like you're small and then you get bigger and bigger? Yes, that's exactly what it is, yes. You know, yes. But that's not what it is at all. You just, you like the composition, so you set it that way. You like it that way, so you set it that way. Um, this is why the, the camera movement, when motivated, is and should be invisible to the audience. This is probably the most important thing uh, today, just to remember, is that when you're, when you're shooting something, uh, that's the last point I make, Jesus, I'm only past five minutes, I've only been two minutes past five. When you're shooting something, keep in mind, uh, when you're shooting something like one of your exercises, um, what you want to do is you want the camera to be like the eyes, and we're seeing what we're seeing what the camera person is seeing. In other words, we're like a voyeur. We're we're seeing something that somebody is spying on. We're seeing it. You know. In other words, if you're shooting, I guess the best way to explain it, if you're shooting and there's like a, a window or a mirror, you probably don't want to take a shot like that where you can be seen. Okay. Because